Welcome to Hope Sabbath School, an in-depth, interactive study of the Word of God. We are just getting started with a series on Ezra and Nehemiah. If you missed part one, you can go to our website, hopetv.org slash hopess, and you can watch the first part because there are lessons from a priest 400 years before the time of Jesus and a government official, Nehemiah, will study about today that have powerful implications for our lives today. And by the way, if you haven't yet downloaded our Hope Channel app, let me just pull it up here. There's Hope Sabbath School. You can watch all of the past programs in the series. You can go and find other pro great programs from Hope Channel. I'll turn some on probably if I push the button too, ca too carelessly. <laughs> but uh, go to the App Store, go to Google Play, download the Hope Channel app, and uh, you'll be blessed. If you've got a parent or grandparent, they don't know how to do it, you help them so that they can be fully engaged with the Word of God. But this series on Ezra and Nehemiah, just getting started, what's the most important lesson you've learned so far? Anybody? Most important lesson. Stephanie? Stay connected with God. Stay connected with God and someone else? Learn, Learn. teach. Learn, Learn. Do, do, it. do it, and, and teach. share it. Yeah. That's right. That's what we learned in part one. And I hope you've learned some lessons too. Write to us at sshope at hopetv.org and we are always happy to hear from you because we're growing together in a study of the Word of God. Here's a note from Greg. Greg lives in Tennessee and he's got a powerful testimony of how God has led in his life. He said, I was raised in the church, but from my 20s until about 40, I drifted away from the Lord and from church. But praise God, he never gave up on me. Amen. Amen. Well, what he didn't know is there was a beautiful lady in Poland watching Hope Sabbath School, which they have in Polish. They put a voiceover in Polish, who was watching. They connected, and on August 18, I think we got a picture, uh, they were married. Now, this isn't a wedding picture. This is when they were visiting Krakow in Poland. Mm -hmm. She's Polish, and uh, they have been watching Hope Sabbath School every week since they got married. Yeah. Yeah. They're active in church. And he says, maybe someday I'll share our story. It's a wonderful story of God's love and guidance. Thank you for continuing to spread the word of God to the world. Blessings from Greg and his wife, Viola. Amen? Amen. Amen. No, the Bible says when you seek first the kingdom, the other things you need Amen. will be added to you, right? Amen. Amen. Thanks for sharing. Here's a note from Abigail in Jamaica. We've got a lot of Hope Sabbath School members in Jamaica. Thank God for some helpful people like you. I didn't understand my Bible studies. And three weeks ago, my Sabbath School teacher introduced me to oh, Sabbath, Sabbath School. Sabbath school. <laughs> I started watching your program and I'm learning to understand the Bible little by little. And my teacher is very proud of me. Yeah. <laughs> I never stopped watching Hope Sabbath School because if it wasn't for your program, I wouldn't understand my Bible studies. I hope and trust that our Lord and Savior Jesus will bless you all, and I hope to see you all in heaven. Amen. 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 Well, Abigail, I don't know how old you are, but your teacher gave you wise counsel, and that is that we can learn together, yeah. uh, because this is not just in-depth, but it's what? Interactive. Interactive. Right. Interactive. And so thanks for being part of our Hope Sabbath School family. Here's a touching testimony from a donor in Anguilla, in the British West Indies. Mm -hmm. No name. I won't give you the name. But here's what it says. I wrote to you, Hope Sabbath School, a while back. I was very sad and dejected at the time because of my dire financial straits, and I could very well lose my home. Thank you for personally answering my email mm -hmm. and for your kind and encouraging words. It really helped a lot. Amen. Amen. You read a letter from a lovely older donor, like me, who gave a gift to help support Hope Sabbath School and the Ministry of Hope Channel. I felt guilty that I didn't spend my money more wisely than I should have, and uh, now I didn't have the money to give. I cried and prayed about it for a while, and then God gave me the answer. Amen. Amen. Give a recurring donation of $10 a month. Amen. Amen. You say, that's not a fortune. Well, maybe it is a fortune for an elderly person. So I did. I went to the website, set up to give $10 a month, and I feel better. I've even come closer to really trusting God to provide. Amen. Amen. 
I've had to, as certainly I cannot provide very well for myself anymore, but I'm not terrified anymore. Mm. I have hope in Christ and His soon return. I always watch Hope Sabbath School each Friday to bring in the Sabbath. I love the team, the interactive teaching style. Thank you for being so diligent in studying the Word of God. I'd like to meet this lady, wouldn't you? Yes. yes. Well, if any of you are interested, I'll confidentially give you an email. You can write to her. But she says, God bless you all. She's giving $10 a month to be a partner in the mission. Amen. 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 You know, that's beautiful. We're all partnering together in the mission. This is a donor-supported ministry. All of our programs, Bible programs on Hope Channel are blessed by your support. Heather writes from Australia, and she says, Dear Hope Sabbath School team, your lesson study and share time this week was the very best I have ever watched. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm a Sabbath School team leader and teacher down under. That's a way of talking about Australia. And every week you inspire me to encourage my church family. Amen? Amen. 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 Please be encouraged that you're touching souls. I'd say put it in different language, that God is touching souls through you mm. in Australia, New Zealand, and the Pacific Islands. Amen? Amen. 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 One last note from the country of Namibia. Mm. Where's Namibia? Right below Angola. You're exactly right. Right yeah. below Angola. It used to be German West Africa, mm. kind of embedded into South Africa. Mm. And Inonge writes and says... Saints of the living God, you are really amazing and inspiring. And we say, Amen. Amen. And praise God. I have been watching Hope Sabbath School for a long time, and I'm seeing myself learning more about a God who loves me unconditionally Amen. and is interceding for me. Amen. Amen. I even discovered your Hope Sabbath School study guide. Well, I've got mine right here. And that's what we're going to be using today. You can download that from our website, mm -hmm. hopetv.org slash hopess. Don't forget the app that you can find. You can even download it from the app if you print from your phone. Amazing technology. Mm -hmm. And uh, Inonge says, I've discovered the Hope Sabbath School app, our guide, and it's so helpful that I'm sharing it with a lot of people, and it's making our Bible study more lively and fruitful. Amen. 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 That's so encouraging, isn't yeah. it? We, yeah. You see, we're not just looking for admirers who go, oh, what a wonderful program. No, we're looking for tens of thousands mm -hmm. of disciples yeah. Yeah. who teach an in-depth, interactive study of the Word of yeah. God, Amen. just like Inonge in Namibia. Thanks for writing to us. Thanks for partnering with us. Right now, we're going to sing a 3,000-year-old scripture song from Psalm 25. And if you listen carefully to the words, it's got a lot to do with this series of honoring God even when there's adversity, opposition, choosing to be the woman of God, the man of God He's called us to be. I'm excited that my wife, Bodil, who composes our scripture songs, is going to sing with us today. And we invite you to sing too. To you, O oh Lord, I lift up my soul. Let's sing together. Thank you, Bodil, and uh, thank you to the Word of God, because we just sang Scripture. 
Amen. Read Thousand Year Old Scripture Song with a new tune. But I kind of like that tune, don't you? It's kind of yes. do, do, do. <laughs> it's kind of a happy tune. Yes. And, uh, but do you notice there, you think of Ezra and Nehemiah, uh, they, they would have known that scripture, right? Because they were mm -hmm. around four, in the 400 B.C. Mm -hmm. and, and the song was written 1000 B.C. So maybe a different tune. But let me not be ashamed. Let not my enemies triumph over me. Mm -hmm. yes. There were lessons in that scripture for them. We're going to study about a great man of God named Nehemiah. He wasn't a priest, wasn't a preacher. Oh, maybe he kind of was a preacher, but actually his main profession was a, a government official. Mm. Lessons for our lives today. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we're excited because the word of God is alive because your Holy Spirit guided the prophets to write and your Holy Spirit guides us as we study. So please, may the lessons that you want us to learn from the life of this government official, Nehemiah, be so clear that we may not only hear, but do what we learn. Mm -hmm. And yes, share with others too, to bless their lives. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Well, I'm excited. You know, Nehemiah is actually someone that I have great uh, admiration for and respect mm -hmm. for. Another one for me is John the Baptist. Just have great respect. Daniel, well, we could list a whole lot of men and women of God, couldn't we? But let's go to Nehemiah chapter 1, and we'll begin uh, with uh, some news. Ninety years has passed since Zerubbabel led the first wave of captives back home, and more than a decade since Ezra took that second wave, and only about 1,500 men plus families went. And now... Nehemiah gets some news. Mm. And Joshua, would you begin our study with Nehemiah chapter 1, verses 1 to 3? Sure. And I'll be reading from the New King James Version. The Bible says, The words of Nehemiah, the son of Hakaliah, it came to pass in the month of Chislev, in the 20th year, as I was in Shushan, the citadel, that Hanani, one of my brethren, came with men from Judah, and I asked them concerning the Jews who had escaped, who had survived the captivity, and concerning Jerusalem. And they said to me, The survivors who are left from the captivity in the province are there in great distress and reproach. The wall of Jerusalem is also broken down, and its gates are burned with fire. Now, Shushan, I'm looking in my Bible, and it's got another, uh, or Susa. Mm -hmm. Now, there was a prophet in a previous generation who lived in Susa. What was his name? With the wheels and the wheels within the wheels. and Ezekiel. Ezekiel. Mm -hmm. Daniel was in the city of Babylon. Ezekiel was down the, down the river <laughs> at Susa or Shushan. Now we've got Nehemiah living there because that was the, hmm. that was the capital, right? That's the headquarters. And he's a government official. But news comes to him that is, uh, what's well, bad news? What is the bad news, Stephanie? That there is persecution for those who have left and gone back to Jerusalem and discouragement. Persecution and? How, how's the work going? It's stopped. It's stopped. Yeah. It's stopped. It's stopped. Yes, yes. So you've probably given us a clue already, but what are some reasons why the work is, is going so slowly or not going at all, Brittany? They had opposition from the neighboring peoples around them that were discouraging them from completing the work God gave them to do. All right. Any other thing besides opposition from surrounding people, Jason? Well, they didn't have a lot to go back to begin with, and so they only had a small group there. Right. I mean, if we do the math, a few went back with Zerubbabel, a few more go back with Ezra, and most of the people are still living in, uh, in Babylon or in Shushan. And we talked about that in part one of our series. What were some of the reasons they might have stayed? When, 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 when God moved in a supernatural way through decrees of several kings to say you can go home, Cyrus and then Artaxerxes a hundred and some years later, right? Yeah. What are some, well, not quite, that's about 80 years later. Get that right so I don't yeah. get a thousand emails, right? <laughs> but, you know, it's from 538 and now 457. Mm -hmm. And what were some of the reasons people might have stayed? When they could have gone home? They were discouraged or they were not willing to leave the, the, the blessings of the land. So they were comfortable. We talked about that. Or? 
Exactly. Maybe God had them there for a reason. Maybe God had them there for a reason, for a few. But we talked about one other reason, and that is that they were disconnected from God. Yes, right. mm -hmm. You know, which was part of being comfortable with this life, right? Mm -hmm. Right. And so uh, there are challenges. Well, let's see, uh, Brittany, if you could read verse 4 of Nehemiah chapter 1, how Nehemiah responds to the news that he receives. I'll be reading from the New King James Version, Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 4. So it was when I heard these words that I sat down and wept and mourned for many days. I was fasting and praying before the God of heaven. Mm -hmm. that's, that's kind of an unusual reaction. I mean, you hear mm -hmm. sad news from back home and you go, oh, you know, back home in Kenya, some things that's challenging or back home in mm -hmm. Myanmar or Mizoram or back home in Ghana, Antigua, Baltimore. <laughs> <laughs> you know, sometimes we go, that's really sad, right? Yes. right. But w what does that tell us that he wept for many days, fasted and prayed before the God of heaven? Mm -hmm. What does that tell us about Nehemiah? Yes, Harold? Well, he's a man that takes God's word seriously because actually God worked a miracle with the previous kings. So it's like, people like why like why are we like not even taking to heart God's word so he's a man of God we can see very mm -hmm. godly mm. okay Travis he's unselfish totally unselfish just thinking about others you know mm -hmm. and I mean he's got the cupbearer's condo mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right mm -hmm. yeah. it's probably toward the top of the building I mean mm -hmm. he was a high-ranking government official and he hears bad news from the homeland mm -hmm. and he is Mm -hmm. Devastated. Devastated, yes. Yeah. Even though he was in Susan, his heart was in a different place. And I think mm -hmm. that kind of dichotomy with these two things was troubling to him. Mm -hmm. He probably felt lonely. I mean, even though he was high ranking and he had all these perks, he, was, he wanted to be with his people. Mm -hmm. And I think that drew him mm -hmm. into this mm -hmm. emotional situation that he was in. Now, some people get bad news. There's a lesson we can learn because in life we'll all get some bad news, right? Maybe you're watching yeah. today and you just got some really bad news. What are some mm -hmm. negative things a person could do when they get bad news? Mm -hmm. Anybody? Revert to substance abuse. Right. They can say, I'm going to go and get drunk or high or mm -hmm. whatever. Do some bad thing to try to self-medicate. Mm -hmm. Keep it to yourself. I mean, he, he just cried. He, I think we have to just allow ourselves to mourn and he gave himself permission mm. to So some people try that. to, we have an expression in English, to stuff it. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know how you, you translate that into <laughs> Polish or Swahili. But we kind of keep it inside. Yeah. Don't deal with it. What's the problem with that? It's unhealthy. It's unhealthy. Mm -hmm. It has an effect on you. It has an effect on you. And whether we like it or not, it will have an effect on the people around right. us. It will yeah. seep out some way, right? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. he says, this is sad, I'm going to deal with this mm -hmm. by weeping and praying. Praying. praying, crying out to God. Right. Stephanie? Well, I think it's interesting that that's who he went to. He went to God knowing that this is the God who can fix the problem. All right. Mm -hmm. He Let, knew where to go. So let's listen to his prayer. Travis, mm -hmm. if you could read for us verses 5 through 11 of Nehemiah chapter 1. And what impresses you the most as you listen? Now, it's amazing to us. I mean, this is really, Scripture is so precious. We are overhearing his prayer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, he wrote it down as a witness, guided by the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. But just we're overhearing a prayer that was prayed mm -hmm. 400 years before the time of Jesus. That's amazing, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Listen, and uh, what impresses you the most about his prayer? And I'll be reading from the New King James Version. And I said... I pray, Lord God of heaven, O great and awesome God, you who keep your covenant and mercy with those who love you and observe your commandments, please let your ear be attentive and your eyes open that you may hear the prayer of your servant, which I pray before you now, day and night, for the children of Israel, your servants, and confess the sins of the children of Israel, which we have sinned against you. Both my father's house and I have sinned. We have acted very corruptly against you and have not kept the commandments, the statutes, nor the ordinances which you've commanded your servant Moses. 
Remember, I pray, the word that you commanded your servant Moses, saying, If you are unfaithful, I will scatter you among the nations. But if you return to me and keep my commandments and do them, though some of you were cast out to the farthest part of heavens, yet I will gather them from there and bring them to this place, which I have chosen as a dwelling place for my name. Now these are your servants and your people, whom you have redeemed by your great power and by your great hand. O Lord, I pray, let your ear be attentive to the prayer of your servant and to the prayer of your servants who desire to fear your name and let your servant prosper this day, I pray, and grant him mercy in the sight of this man, for I was the king's cupbearer. Mm. What do you notice about the prayer? Mm. Alex. Well, he identifies himself amongst the sinners. Mm. So he's hum it's humble. Right. Now he may have said, well, I am a sinner. And we say, well, that's good. He's obviously humble. He's not saying, well, there are a bunch of sinners, and, mm -hmm. but we have all sinned. Mm -hmm. what, what do you notice, Puya? At the center of his prayer is claiming God's promise. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think that's really very powerful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How does he know God's promise? He has studied it. Time with mm -hmm. He spends time studying it, so he knew them. He is quoting scripture. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He is quoting recent scripture, mm -hmm. 100 years old. <laughs> Who's that? Moses. No, Daniel. 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 He's quoting recent scripture, mm -hmm. but he's also quoting what we would call ancient scripture. He's quoting from the Torah, right? Mm -hmm. From the books of Moses, particularly from Deuteronomy. Mm -hmm. So what does that tell you about this man? He knows the word. It's a student he of scripture. He, he, he's filled mm -hmm. with the word. With, with the, the word. word. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't know how to pray. <laughs> Isn't there somewhere that says that the Holy Spirit will help us yes. Yes. when we don't know how to pray? Mm -hmm. yes. Yes. And the Holy Spirit is helping him to do what? Claim the promises. Claim the promises of God. Yes. Pedro? Yes, that's one of the things that I, I looked at here, that his, his prayers resonate very well with the prayer of Daniel when he was asking for the 70 weeks, mm -hmm. uh, to, for the promise of the 70 weeks. And... And when we look into the Bible, mm -hmm. I, I connect it with it because when I pray, before I pray, I like to read the Psalms. I like to read some uh, promises of the Bible so I can know how to talk to God because He mm -hmm. talks to us first, then I can talk to Him back. And I think definitely He spends some time mourning on the Word of God. Yes. Lisa, I'm going to ask you a question and I'm going to give you a chance for some others. We all go through hard times. Mm -hmm. Think of a hard time that you went through Mm -hmm. and a, a scripture that God brought to you mm -hmm. to give you courage in that difficult time. Yeah. Is there uh, something that comes to mind? Um, I think of when I was, I think previously in another show, I talked about going through um, my ordeal with cancer. And I remember when I was going through treatment and I was going through all the side effects, the pain and everything. And I remember the scripture verse that said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Mm -hmm. And they, yea, through I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will be with you. And just saying, Lord, you said that. I didn't say that. You <laughs> said that you would be with me. And I just echoed back his words to me and said, Lord, you have to fulfill this because it's your word yeah. in my life. And just there in that presence, I felt that he was with me in that journey. Powerful. Mm -hmm. Hebrews 13, I think, verse 5, quotes the Old Testament, I will never leave you or no, forsake you. Mm -hmm. And then you quoted from Psalm 23, right. even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Mm -hmm. And it was kind of the valley of the shadow of death. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I will fear no, no evil. No evil. Why? You are uh, with, with me. me. You're with me. Someone else, go through, you went through a difficult time, a hard time, and give me a scripture, a promise that God brought to you. Because Puya is exactly right. Mm -hmm. It is the promises of God's word mm -hmm. that gives Naomi. He doesn't just go and slit his throat and die or jump off a bridge at Susa, right? <laughs> no. In his pain, in his anguish, he, he quotes the promises of God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Gladys? Yes, uh, my favorite is Psalm 46. Just like Lisa, I went through a, a brain surgery. I had a brain tumor, and it's just this scripture really brought a lot of comfort. God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in time of travel. Mm -hmm. It's ever-present. Mm -hmm. There's not a moment when you're going through travel that he is not there with you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Therefore, we will not fear, mm -hmm. though the earth be removed yes. and the mountains be cast mm. into the, the depths of, of the, the sea. sea. Psalm 46, 46, 1 and 2. Now, uh, I'm so thankful that we learn scripture songs. Yeah. Yes. And some of us maybe make little scripture memory cards because there are times we will need that word. Yes. Mm -hmm. And the Holy Spirit will bring it to us. Joshua? Yeah. I didn't know if you needed another example. But. I will <laughs> let you take one before we move on. Yes. Yeah. So years ago, I was involved with someone that I shouldn't have been involved with. And, you know, we fell in temptation. And I remember that afterwards I was like sick to my stomach, remorseful about it. And I just got on my knees and prayed to God. And, you know, after I prayed, I studied Psalm 51 where David was repenting for, you know, going into Bathsheba. Mm -hmm. And when I studied it out, it said that uh, the Lord, the Lord uh, appreciates a broken spirit, mm -hmm. a broken and a contrite heart. Yes. These, oh God, you will not despise. Yes. And after that, I, I said, wow, you know, Lord, you know, <laughs> you know me like, I, I'm sorry. It it's, became the word of God to you. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Right? Yes. Yeah. Very it became renewed. God's Word, creating me a clean heart of God yes. and renew a right spirit. Yeah. So yeah. you say, well, if there's time, but there was someone, maybe you're watching and you needed to hear that testimony today because the Word of God gives us hope, right? Yes. Why? Because God loves us with an immeasurable and unfailing love. Yes. Amen. Amen. So Nehemiah is like, Lord, what do I do? He cries out to God and moving to chapter 2, Stephanie, you have a comment before we I move do. on? I do. I think there's a little, at the end of verse 11, he asked, and grant him mercy in the sight of this man. Somehow he had an inkling or an idea that God was going to use the king to answer the prayer. All right. So read on for us now, if you would, chapter 2, verses 1 to 3, okay. because four months pass mm. before he sees any kind of answer to this request to grant him mercy in the sight of this man. We could take some time with that because our prayers are not always answered at the time right we would like. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. But we can trust his promise, right? Yes. yes. Let's see what happens. We're now in chapter 2, verse 1, as uh, his prayer is about to be answered. And I'll be reading from the King James Version. And it came to pass in the month of Nisan, in the 20th year of Artaxerxes the king, that wine was before him, and I took up the wine and gave it unto the king. Now I had not been before time sad in his presence. Mm -hmm. Wherefore the king said unto me, Why is thy countenance sad, seeing thou art not sick? This is nothing else but sorrow of heart. Then I was very sore afraid, and said unto the king, Let the king live forever. Why should not my countenance be sad when the city, the place of my father's sepulchres, lies waste and the gates thereof are consumed with fire? Mm. Four months have passed. He's before the king. The king notices he looks sad. That is very dangerous. <laughs> Why? Yeah, Actually, Harold? back in those days, it would be an insult to be sad in front of a king because actually... It was thought that since the king was such a wonderful person, all your problems should have been gone away. Okay. That was a belief back in all the right. days. All right. That's part of it, but that's not the main reason why he's terrified. Oh. Okay. He should have been happy to be before the king, but there's something else going on, Travis. Well, the king, you know, back then, the king is always looking out for his well-being. And so he's watching the people around them. And when they see something different about them, he's wondering, what is their agenda? What are they up to? Because he's worried for his life. What's his job as cupbearer? Cupbearer. What does that mean, cupbearer? It's not like a cup holder, right? <laughs> <laughs> What's the cupbearer, Pedro? So he was the man who would drink out of the cup mm -hmm. before we would serve to the king to make sure there was no poison in it. Mm -hmm. So give me a little more than just a sip, a sip, a person who sips the drink. He's the security man. Yes, oh, yeah. yes. He's the, he's the bodyguard. He's mm -hmm. the, I mean, there's soldiers out there, but he's protecting. And all of a sudden his body language is like, mm -hmm. right? So he's afraid. Mm -hmm. yes. And the king notices. And, and your old English version said, sore. Yes. Right? Afraid. Sore. Uh, I, I, what does our New King James say? Dreadfully. 
uh, dreadfully, I mean, it's a strong word, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Dreadfully afraid. Mm -hmm. But what does he do? We're learning something about Nehemiah. What does he do? He speaks in courage. He, what does he do? He tells the, the, the truth. truth. Yeah. He tells, he tells the, the truth. truth. Yeah. Oh, well, my stomach's hurting today. <laughs> King. You know, no, no. He tells the truth mm -hmm. because God is going to answer his prayer. Are you with yes. me? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Does this make sense? Yes. Mm -hmm. He tells the truth. And what does the king say to him? Verse 4, Lisa. Amazing. Uh, again, supernatural intervention is about to happen. I'll be reading from the New King James Version. Then the king said to me, What do you request? Mm. So I prayed to the God of heaven. <laughs> <laughs> What's Amen. startling about the king's comment? Answer to prayer. What's startling about it? Come on now. He's getting ready to give him whatever he asks. Yes. Right. Yes. It's like, would you like a small cup of juice, an apple? <laughs> no, no. Yeah. It's, what do you want? it's, it's an, wide open, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. Just make your request. Yeah. So here's another key question for us. Mm -hmm. Why does Nehemiah pause and pray before he answers the king? Mm -hmm. Stephanie. He was needing God's guidance. Mm -hmm. right. he was Wisdom. What, what would we do if we didn't pray? Speak foolishness. Might be selfish. Yeah. We could be selfish. We speak foolishness. We could speak foolishness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We may not have all, share all of God's blessings that he would want to give us. Right. So we might think too small, too small. Yeah. Yes. when God's saying, big. Big. Yeah. Yes. What's it? He just asked you. What, what, right. what would you like? Yeah. It's like almost saying anything up to half my kingdom, right? Yeah. Yeah. except he's not drunk like the guy that said that, right? <laughs> True. This, this fellow's not drunk. Yes. Mm -hmm. mm. Moved by the Spirit of God, mm -hmm. he asks his cupbearer, mm -hmm. what is your request? Mm -hmm. And you're saying, what's the takeaway? Alex, you remind us in a previous study, there's lessons for us today. This great window of opportunity mm -hmm. is open What's the lesson for us when a great window of opportunity opens for us? Pray. 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 Yeah. Mm -hmm. Pray. God, Lord. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, let's keep reading and see, see what happens next. Laurel, could you read on? We've looked at verse 4. And uh, let's look at verses 5 through 11 and, and see what one might consider to be an audacious mm -hmm. response. What's another word for audacious? Bold. 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 Over the top, <laughs> courageous, yes. God directed yes. response. Let's see what happens, verses 5 through 11. All right, I'll be reading from the New American Standard Bible. I said to the king, If it please the king, and if your servant has found favor before you, send me to Judah, to the city of my father's tomb, that I may rebuild it. Then the king said to me, the queen sitting beside him, how long will your journey be? And when will you return? Mm -hmm. So it pleased the king to send me and I, and I gave him a definite time. I said to the king, if it pleases the king, let the letters be given me for the governors of the provinces beyond the river that they may allow me to pass through until I come to Judah and a letter to Asaph, the keeper of the king's forest, that he may give me timber to make beams for the gates of the fortress, which is by the temple, for the wall of the city, and for the house to which I will go. And the king granted them to me, because the good hand of my God was on me. Let's hold it right there for a moment. We can look at verses 9 and following. Mm. What do you get from the response of Nehemiah? Details. Details, for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes? Yes. Have you ever, if someone said, what would you like today, Harold? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, <laughs> I think I would like a massive amount of things, please. Yeah. <laughs> Detailed, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. he, in fact, it's like he came to the king with a solution to other people's problems. It wasn't, mm -hmm. this is the problem we have, we don't know what to do. It's, no. Here's the situation, and here's how you can help. If you allow me to go and provide materials, then this will be resolved. Mm -hmm. So think of some other Bible characters. I mean, this is nothing short mm. of bold, courageous. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. 
yeah. of other Bible characters, mm -hmm. we've said when God opens a door of opportunity, maybe it's to go back to Mizoram and hold meetings. You know, I know you were back in yeah. Mizoram. Or God may say, I want you to go and do something in Malawi. Travis, he may ask you to go there or he may, may mm -hmm. ask you to go to California as a missionary or whatever, yeah. right? We've learned first, what should we do? Pray. 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 Yeah, mm -hmm. earnestly pray, right, yeah. God? Mm -hmm. Because I don't want to act foolishly, mm -hmm. foolishly, mm -hmm. selfishly, or think mm -hmm. too small. small, too small, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then he comes with this really bold response. Mm -hmm. Can you think of other women or men of the Bible mm -hmm. who just had a holy boldness when God mm -hmm. opened a window of opportunity? Mm -hmm. Will you? I remember Esther. I think mm -hmm. we can see the parallel story here of uh, being in the position of influence and opportunity mm -hmm. and uh, the, the words like, for such a time as these. Mm -hmm. So I think God intentionally places us in positions and um, places where He can use us if we're willing to be used. Mm -hmm. And of course, that, she's a contemporary. Yes. Yes. This is happening about the same time. Right. So. Uh, another another Bible character that when God opened the window of opportunity was just really bold. Mm. Oh, Daniel. Mm. He literally, the, the window was open. Like, <laughs> he prayed. <laughs> <laughs> You're thinking literally the window yeah. in Daniel 6. <laughs> um, that was an opportunity to honor God even if it meant being executed, though. Right, yes. But the, still, yeah, it was a window of opportunity to say, you honor me, and I will show you what a great and awesome God I am, mm. right? Yes. Mm -hmm. And, of course, the story is being delivered from those lions, right? Mm. That's a great story, too. Someone else, just Jason, or someone just, can we use the expression Holy Spirit boldness, mm -hmm. right? You're not talking about selfish or human boldness, but like, holy, really? Yeah. Holy yeah. Spirit boldness. So I think of a story in the Gospels of blind Bartimaeus mm -hmm. when he's there by the side of the road and uh, he's asking Jesus to have mercy on him. He wants to be able to see. And even when people are shutting him down and telling him to be quiet, he calls out even louder. So mm -hmm. there's clearly boldness and courageousness there, even against others who are telling him to be And silent. actually when he's calling out, and I think that's in Luke 18, he's crying, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But then Jesus stops and says, asks him a question. What do, you, what, what do you want, want me to do, do for you? you? It's mm -hmm. almost like the king mm -hmm. 400 years earlier. What is your request? Mm -hmm. And instead, of, what, what are some things Bartimaeus could have said? Money. Money. <laughs> could I have some figs? Yes. <laughs> could I have uh, a drachma <laughs> or a shekel? Yes. What does he say? He Lord, I want to see. I want to see. Mm -hmm. right. mm. Yeah. Also, Stephen. Holy Spirit boldness. Yes. Mm -hmm. Amen. When the door of window of opportunity or door of opportunity opens, pray. Yes. Amen. Yeah. God, give me holy boldness. Yes. What do you want me to do here? Mm. Yeah. One, one last. Yeah, Stephanie. I was thinking of Elijah. Mm. Okay. He was very bold when he went and said, there will not be rain. <laughs> <laughs> Except by my word. That's yeah. right. Wow. Mm -hmm. yeah. God had to be clearly, and, and we see in that narrative that God was leading him. But again, it's, Lord, what do you want me to do? What's my next step? Mm. Show me. Uh, is it possible that there could be women of God and men of God like that in this generation? Amen. Yes. Amen. You say it has to be. Yes. Mm. Right? Mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. Well, we're going to go on to verse 9. Harold, if you could read Nehemiah 2, 9 and 10 as Nehemiah embarks on his mission. Uh, you've got to say he's got Holy Spirit boldness for sure. Mm. The window of opportunity or door of opportunity is opened and prayerfully he went through. He walked through. Yes. Mm. Verses 9 and 10 of Nehemiah chapter 2. And I'll be reading from the New King James Version. Then I went to the governors in the region beyond the river and gave them the king's letters. Now the king had sent captains of the army and horsemen with me when Sambalat the Horonite and Tobiah the Ammonite official heard of it, they were deeply disturbed that a man had come to seek the well-being of the children of Israel. Mm. Mm. Now we're going to hear more about opposition in our further studies. And these are two key characters who are, mm. to use a colloquial expression, a thorn in his yes. side. Right. Mm. 
he's clearly followed God and opposition comes. Mm -hmm. Why should that not surprise us? Mm -hmm. Anybody? Yes, Brittany. Jesus himself said, they persecuted the prophets who were before you. They persecuted me. They're going to persecute you. And yes. didn't he say in John 15, they hated me. Yeah. Yes. And they will hate you. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And in chapter 16, he said, they'll even think killing you, they're doing service for God. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So he's going out to do a work clearly guided by God. Mm -hmm. And he faces opposition. Mm -hmm. Think of some other Bible characters. They weren't just being foolish. You know, some, we could do something foolish, right? Mm -hmm. And get opposition or mm -hmm. harm. Uh, Jonah, <laughs> case in point, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. but, but think of women or men of God who were clearly following God courageously who also experienced opposition. Mm -hmm. Lisa? I think of the New Testament, the woman with the issue of blood. Ah. Um, mm. It's a miraculous story where she was trying to get closer to Jesus, but he was surrounded by a lot of men and was in a crowd. And to think of all the barriers she had to overcome to get close to him, being a woman, being sickly, being impure because she had the issue of blood, but she was still willing to go beyond all this societal opposition, these barriers that were in her way that are not visible, to get close to Jesus and to touch the hem of and his garment. And was that clearly the will of God for her life? It was. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right? And, and Jason, you mentioned earlier, Bartimaeus had opposition too, right? Right. right. He told him, be quiet, be quiet. And he shouted louder. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody else. Yes, Gladys. Yes, I think of Peter. You know, he will be flogged. He will be in prison, and the Bible says that the next day he will be preaching. Mm -hmm. So I think he, he was just like this courage that could not be quenched. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the opposition doesn't mean God is not with me. Mm -hmm. No. Correct. Mm -hmm. Right? Correct. All right. Harold? Also, Joshua and Caleb. So it could, opposition can, can, can come from within mm -hmm. because yes. there's yes. like 10, tri, 10 of the leaders um, of the tribe of Israel opposed yeah, Joshua and Caleb, who represented the other two from the 12 tribes. You're talking about the story, remember, where 12 spies were sent in by yes. Moses. Yes. 10 came back and said, forget it, it won't work. Yes. But Caleb and Joshua said, with no. God is with us, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. He was faithful. They were faithful to the end. Mm -hmm. And yet God promised that both of you will enter the, kind of Canaan, the land of Canaan, but the rest of your generation will not. Mm -hmm. so. Who are you? I am reminded of uh, all these um, great men and women of God throughout the ages of, you know, history of Christianity itself after the Bible uh, time. Like, I remember the Reformers, John Wycliffe, Martin Luther, John Huss, like these men of God, like whenever they were convinced to move for God, they always face opposition. Mm. Mm. So it's almost like a given that if you are doing the Lord's work, you are to be facing mm. opposition because behind the scene, mm -hmm. we know that Satan is working, you know, mm. to attack God's movement. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's look at the, some words of Jesus, which I, I think illustrate that in John chapter 16. We just pause because Nehemiah's experiencing opposition and, and uh, Puyi is saying it's happened even after the end of the writing of Scripture that mm -hmm. faithful women of God, men of God, yeah. have, have experienced opposition, not for doing foolish things, but for doing precisely mm -hmm. what, God wanted. what God wanted them to do. Yes. John chapter 16 uh, verses 1 through 3. Pedro, could you read that for us? Yes. John chapter 16, verses 1 to 3. I'll be reading from the New King James Version. And Jesus is speaking, These things I have spoken to you, that you should not be made to stumble. They will put you out of synagogues. Yes, the time is come that whoever kills you will think that he's offered God service. And these things they do to you because they have not known the Father nor me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this is a spiritual battle. Yes. Yeah. Right? It's what we describe as the great controversy mm -hmm. between good and evil. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So behind uh, Sanballat and Tobiah or whoever the other people will show up mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. are forces beyond them, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Forces of darkness. That's why Ephesians 6 says, put on the whole armor of God. Amen. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because conflict is going to come. Well, let's go to Nehemiah again. We say it's, it's, he's experiencing it. He doesn't turn back. Let's see how he proceeds. Brittany, could you read verse 11 of chapter 2? 
when uh, Nehemiah arrives at Jerusalem. I'll be reading from the New King James Version, Nehemiah chapter 2, verse 11. So I came to Jerusalem and was there three days. And you might say, mm -hmm. so what? <laughs> um, what? Is there some kind of cryptic clue there? Uh, w w can you think of anyone else who said three days? Esther. Esther. Mm -hmm. tell, tell me the story, uh, Stephanie, about Esther. She said three days. Three days what? And let me fast with my servants. And you go back and fast. Fast and pray. And pray. Yes. Okay. Three days. Mm -hmm. and, and now it doesn't say what Nehemiah did, but he said he went there and he was there for three, three days. days. Is that reading too much into the text? Uh, when Paul, Saul lost his sight, he went in Damascus and for three days, mm -hmm. he said he fasted and prayed. Mm -hmm. Yes? Based on his relationship with God and his immediate response when the king asked him, you know, what do you want? His immediate response was to pray. Mm -hmm. So I don't know that, I don't think we're reading too much into it to say that that would be a response that he would have mm -hmm. in this conflict. By the way, it's a life and death issue with Esther. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a life and death issue with Saul of Tarsus. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's something yes. really significant. I, otherwise, why, why mention the three days? Yeah. Pe Pedro? Yeah. Well, we see in the stories you know, I see in Nehemiah, he's constantly praying for God's guidance. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I see, and I look at myself, uh, my walk with God, uh, I, I try to understand that every step of the way I have to seek God constantly. Because sometimes, if I not, if I don't do it, God will not be able to act. Mm -hmm. I see the works of the Holy Spirit as a work for uh, guiding us through through His work, mm -hmm. and we need to be submissive. And the best way to be submissive is by praying. And the story of Paul gives that clarity. Paul was blind, and he he fasted for three days. And the very next thing, God goes to Ananias and tell go and heal. This. Lay hands on him and he'll receive his sight. Mm -hmm. And, back to a previous study, and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Yes. Amen. Yeah. And go out as an unstoppable force for, for the kingdom of heaven. Mm -hmm. yes. Right? Amen. So, I, I don't think it's reading too much into the story to That's say, right. okay, before we rush in, I can do this, I'm a cupbearer, I'm well trained. Mm. Okay, God. <laughs> yes. We fast, we pray because something important needs to happen for your kingdom. Gladys. And that's exactly what I was going to say. You know, our human nature is just like, okay, this is what I know. I'm going to go and do it fast. But he took the time to be still mm -hmm. and wait for God to lead mm -hmm. him on what to do next. Mm -hmm. Well, let's see what he does, Puya, in verses 12 through 16 of chapter 2. Um, interesting uh, that he doesn't go out with a big... Uh, fanfare and parade, but he leaves mm -hmm. under the cover of darkness. Let's try to figure out, it must be somewhat related to the three days of fasting and praying, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So let's hear as Puya reads uh, chapter 2 of Nehemiah, verses 12 to 16. I'll be reading from the New King James Version. Then I arose in the night, I and a few men with me. I told no one what my God had put in my heart to do at Jerusalem, nor was there any animal with me, except the one on which I rode. Mm -hmm. And I went out by night through the valley gate of the serpent well and the refuse gate, and viewed the walls of Jerusalem, which were broken down, and its gates, which were burned with fire. Then I went on to the fountain, of, the fountain gate and to the king's pool, but there was no room for the animal under me to pass. So I went up in the night by the valley and viewed the wall, then I turned back and entered by the valley gate, and so returned. And the officials did not know where I had gone or what I had done. I had not yet told the Jews, the priests, the nobles, the officials, or the others who did the work. What's going on? Mm. Stephanie goes at night, takes I'm, a few people with him. Yes. I'm assuming for safety. Mm. Right. Uh, doesn't take a whole, you know, entourage of horses and whatever. It's just what he's riding on. What, what's happening here? 
Cool. To me, I'm very impressed by the fact that every time he prays, God gives him very clear instruction. Mm. Mm -hmm. To me, he was given clear instruction, go by yourself with a few other, well, with a few other folks and do it at night. That I, because it says, um, what God, what had, God put had put on my heart. Mm. Mm. So next question, I think you're absolutely right, is why do you think God told him to do it that way? I mean, because if anyone lacks wisdom, let her ask God, let him ask God, right? Yeah. Yeah. Who mm -hmm. gives to all generously or liberally and without reproach or mm -hmm. complaining, right? Mm -hmm. God is like, I'm happy to give you wisdom. You yeah. want to know what to do? Why do you think God gave him what Stephanie described as very specific instructions? Mm -hmm. Travis? Well, I think it could be for two reasons. One, we know that Sunballot and Tobiah were upset that he was even there, so it could be for their protection mm. Mm. Um, if they were out there alone. And also, he was going to meet with the children of Israel afterwards and that he could speak intelligently about what was going to be happening or what, they were, what the problems that they were facing, that he could speak intelligently and they would wonder, how does he know this? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, let's read on in verses 17 and 18. And uh, Gladys, if you could read that for us. He does go back, having done... Uh, an assessment, can you yes. say? Yes. yes. A divinely guided assessment. Yes. Amen. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see what it says in verses 17 and 18 when he does come back and speak to the officials. We're reading from the New International Version, Jeremiah chapter 2, verses 17 and 18. Then I said to them, You see the trouble we are in. Jerusalem lies in ruins, and its gates have been burned with fire. Come, let us rebuild the wall of Jerusalem and we will no longer be in disgrace. I also told them about the gracious hand of my God on me and what the king has said to me. They reply, let us start rebuilding. So they began this good work. Mm -hmm. So what do you notice in the words that he spoke? What, was, what were some important uh, components or ingredients, Brittany? He shared how God had worked miracles with mm -hmm. the king and how he would granted them what they needed. So he's giving them encouragement. Look, God is with us. God is with mm -hmm. us, yes. okay. What else is important, Jason? He identified the reality of the situation. Mm -hmm. He mm -hmm. didn't okay. sugarcoat a, a colloquial phrase, the mm -hmm. problem. He was real about what the issue We've was. We've got a big problem here, yes. yeah. mm -hmm. but God's been open the oh. door of opportunity mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. and provided a solution. And what else did you hear in there that was important? Hear something else, Travis? What did he said, you let hear? us. Uh -huh. Yes. Mm -hmm. let what does us. that tell you? That, mean, that tells me that he was willing to, to lead by example. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I am here to be with you. I'm here to help you. The, Lord, the, the, the Lord's hand is upon me. Yes. We call that servant leadership. Amen. Yes. Yes. Jesus, when he went and washed his disciples' feet, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. uh, Nehemiah is saying, we're, we're serving the Lord together. Yes. Yes. Right? Yes. You know the opposition is going to come. In fact, uh, let's read the last two verses, Lisa, of ni verses 19 and 20 of chapter 2. And, and notice <laughs> how Nehemiah responds uh, to this opposition. I'll be reading from the New King James Version. But when Sanballat the Horonite, Tobiah the Ammonite official, and Jeshem the Arab heard of it, they laughed at us and despised us and said, What is this thing that you are doing? Will you rebel against the king? So I answered them and said to them, The God of heaven himself will prosper us. Therefore we are his servants, will arise and build. But you have no inheritance or right or memorial in Jerusalem. Mm. Mm. <laughs> did, you, <laughs> did you notice that his opposition increased by 50%? Yes. <laughs> Another fellow showed up now. Yep. Uh, uh, an, Arab. an Arab named uh, Geshem or Jeshem. Yeah. Someone who watches from uh, uh, Arabic speaking country will tell us how to say his name. Uh, so it's increased 50%. Yes. Right? Mm. Yeah. And what doesn't Nehemiah do reacting? He doesn't say, oh, 50% more, that's too much. <laughs> what does he say? He the claims the power of God. He yeah. claims God. God will take care of it. Yeah. You know, it reminds us Amen. of a wonderful promise written. 400 years later, 
What shall we say to these things? Mm -hmm. Romans. God is for us. Yeah. If God is for us, who can, who can be, be against, against us? us? Romans 8, verse 31, I think. He who did not spare his own son. Mm -hmm. He didn't know all of that yet, did he? Mm -hmm. But he'd seen God's leading mm -hmm. in his past. Mm -hmm. And he mm -hmm. said, the hand of the Lord is upon us. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, you folks who are trying to hinder God's work, you will have no share in yes. what God is going to do. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's fairly bold. Strong yeah. word. Yeah. So, Strong words. wrap up. A couple of minutes left. Lessons from Nehemiah, mm -hmm. a government official from around 450 B.C. Mm. Puya, what, what do you take from the study today? My biggest takeaway from the story of Nehemiah is that God intentionally places each and every one of us in positions or places where He wants to use us in that area. In my personal story, I, uh, my family was here, my family came here to this country in 2012. Mm -hmm. And after I went through school, I, I learned that I believe that God you know, brought my family here for a reason and me here for a reason. And the more I thought about it, I realized that I needed to do something for my fellow Mizo young people here in the United States. And Mizoram is in the northeast part India. of India. And, and so western when you speak Myanmar. About Mi yeah. uh, and western Myanmar. Okay. Mm -hmm. You needed to do something for your own people right here in right the U.S. Here. So with God's help, we organize now a Mizo Adventist Youth Federation for the whole uh, North American division. For a whole, the whole country? The whole country, and we're moving mm -hmm. forward. These are young Christian men and women yes. with, uh, with some kind of family connection to Mizoram. Yes. So you're saying that God puts us mm -hmm. in a specific place at a specific time. Amen. Mm -hmm. And if we'll have the courage to pray yes. and yeah. say, God, you've opened a door. Help me to be bold for you. Yes. He will do something amazing. Amen. Yes. But we will receive opposition. 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 And you say it's not come yet, but it will. Yes. It has. If we're fa it has already. <laughs> yeah. But if God is for us, who can be against us? Yes. We are just saying, God, if you've asked me to do something important for you, I just want to humble myself before you and say, Lord, show me what you want me to do. Mm -hmm. yes. And I'll do that. We're, we've, we've heard a testimony from Puya today for the Mizoram people, Mizo people. Mm -hmm. But maybe there's a circle of influence you have. You say, God, open the door of opportunity, mm -hmm. and by your grace, I'll be faithful to you. Let's pray together. Father in heaven, we've learned from a government official, Nehemiah, who didn't just stay in a comfortable position and not care about anyone else, but he, he, you put something on his heart to be... Uh, your servant in his generation. God, do that for us too. And help us not to be afraid, but to trust in your strength and your wisdom. And we thank you in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 I'm going to be excited to get an email from you, sshope at hopetv.org, what God's put on your heart, because the world is waiting to hear about a God who loves us with an immeasurable and unfailing love. Go out, share the good news with those around you.